Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in today. Now, I've been asked to share a design that could be a spring design or an Easter card. So that's what I've come up with. And I'm using some of our lovely older stamps because I am aware that not everybody's managed to get any of the new stamps yet. I know it can take them a while to fly over to different parts of the world and I know you eagerly await them. So I thought I'd use something that you've probably already got in your stash. And I think this might actually be my mum's card for Easter, so who knows. As always, I've decorated the envelope look with permanent ink and Posca, so if I need to put it in the post, I know it will reach you safely. And I've used one of our lovely sticker stencils look and created a beautiful spring scene. But again, if where you live where you're going into autumn, just change the colours up and you can make this an autumn scene. Now, the tree I've used is our beautiful blossom tree. But I've added yellow because it reminds me I've got a lovely Forsythia bush in my garden and the flowers are just coming out this beautiful yellow colour at the moment. So that inspired me to add yellow. But obviously blossom, you can have it any colour you wish. And at the end of the day, it's your artwork. Remember that. So I'm going to start. I'm just going to put that to one side and then it gives me an idea of what I've done. And I've got a piece of our lovely multi fairies card, and this is the six by six. And I know you like to know the card it's gone on. This is a, a seven by seven card blank, and it comes in a set with the envelope, and they are on the website. Now, as you know, first of all, I just want to edge this, and I've got my piece of card, my piece of paper here that I use. Now I've already done three sides, so you only need to see me do one. For me, do this at the beginning because if I do it at the end, I'll mess it up. But that's just me. I like to hold it near the edge look and just take a pen, could be a Posca, any of your markers, and just drag it down. And this will help for me. It saves on postage. I've also added it look to my yellow card that I've used for matting and layering. So I've almost eliminated having to use two pieces of, of black card and again here in the UK our postage has um, just gone up again so I'll put that to one side because I do like to reuse that so again I'm thinking of weight if I did need to post the card now I'm using one of our sticker stencils from set six and this has four of these beautiful bottles vases urns um whatever you want to call them and when I was deciding which one to use, what I actually did was I got the acetate for my lovely tree stamp and I sort of put it on the shapes to see which one because I wanted quite a large area at the base and I just put it on to see and different ones and for me that's how, you see that one, I wouldn't get the height. I don't know if you can see that whether it's probably too see-through but... It's just a tip to have a look with your acetate. And this was the one I thought, yeah, I like that shape. Right, let's get my piece of card back. And again, these are very tacky to start off with. So I just pop them on my jeans to detack for the first time. And if they do lose the tack, if they get, as mine are starting already, I've got glitter on there. Don't look, but I may confess to having the odd pet hair dust. Because I believe you can dust your craft room, but that ain't happened to you. Um, so if they do, just wash them. Mild soapy water. Don't scrub the back. Just rinse and let it dry sticky side up and it'll come back nice and sticky. Right, so the colours I'm going to use for the actual bottle, we're going to create the bottle shape or the vase shape first. And we're going to come in with green sleeves and pine. So you know me, I like to turn my work to make it easier. And often again, we're asked what size stencil brush to use. Now my favourite is the big stencil brush. And I use this especially through stencils for making my backgrounds. But when I'm creating something like my lovely bottles or vases, 
I want to keep the area a little bit whiter so I don't want the ink to come in too far so I find if I use the number seven that's just the right size so I'm just going to start and go around my bottle look and just flick the colour in and across the base and then I'll turn it round and I will lift it closer so you can have a look and I can do this quite quite speedily but I've not come too far in but I've just got that lovely and I purposely want it darker on this side I've just decided this is going to be the side where my shadow is going to be so in fact we can come in add a little bit more that's all I'm going to do with the green sleeves so next we're going to bring in the pine so obviously this is a deeper colour go down to the smaller brush the number three so we get a more concentration of colour and this time when I flick and I know my hand might get in the way so if I try and bring it closer to show you I'm actually just going to almost just catch the edge of the sticker stencil look and again just go all the way around and this is one of those things funny enough the more you do it the more you'll almost have the confidence and almost you get used to how your brush works and I'll turn it round and if you notice I'm just dragging a little bit more colour across the neck because that will help with the shape just want to give it a bit more room make it a bit more 3D so I'm almost being mindful to blend it on that edge so if I lift it up look so I just want this side a little bit darker so especially on that edge there and at the base here and then I want to make the neck looks lovely because it, it's coming and it's accentuating the narrow bit but I just want to give myself a lip at the top here so if I get my mini hill masks and go for the flatter one look and just pop it across there we can create some shadow and again I'm just going to add more colour at that side and when I take that off look look at the difference and do you know what I still find that amazing that I've got that lovely and if you've got this um, bottle has almost got a flat bottom but if I had one with a lip again I could put that across and accentuate the base but I just I really love doing this I just think for me it adds that extra detail and once you've got that start of your bottle you know if, if you're having one of those days where your mojo's gone and you don't know what to do why not just create yourself some backgrounds shapes like this and then that might inspire you by the time you get to this bit you might decide to put a stencil on and just make a background or to stamp a design but often your mind starts thinking while you're doing this as to all the stamps we've got that will go beautifully inside yeah that's where that one's going inside and just create a scene you know we've done underwater ones haven't we the trees look lovely the florals look lovely some animal magic in there i mean really the world's your oyster what about one of the castles the little bridge the new little bridge looks fabulous in there I made one at the weekend with the bridge and one of the swans and you can actually fit the small bridge and a swan in here and that looks lovely. Now I'm thinking, and I hate to use that Christmas word, but I'm thinking of all the fabulous Christmas scenes that I can put. So this I'm going for almost an Easter scene, like I say, but I can't wait to be doing Christmas scenes. Just change the colours, change my stamps. There we go, look at that. This is such a delicate and beautiful stamp. I use this so much and it's Blossom Tree. Now I'm going to come in with one of our hairs and this is from the Wild Hair set, but this is a small set, so just be aware there are two. 
and for me these small ones it's the sizes that just fit really well with the design actually I love to use the large and the small because it can give me perspective and I've just caught around the edge of my stamps and I know if I don't wipe that off it's going to go on my work I'm just going to put my hair a little bit closer at the bottom just to help with that sort of scale and, and perspective. Now again, I'm sorry if you've got shadow. It's so dark here today. It's pouring with rain. It's grey. It's very dark. So I've got to have a, a light on, otherwise you wouldn't see a thing that I was doing. But it does mean we've got shadow, so again... If you were sat here with me, unfortunately, we do have that shadow. Not a lot I can do. Now, I'm going to add one of the butterflies. I just wanted something over here. And because I've got the stamping in black here, I just thought something. And I love this set. We've got four butterflies and this one's quite small. Again, it helps with perspective, this set, because there's a larger and smaller so I'm just thinking this lovely butterfly over here. And again, I'm just giving each stamp just a, a wet cloth and then my inky binky and back on the acetate just so I've got less chance of losing them. I say less chance because that's what I'm talking, less chance. I know what I'm like. These little stamps do have a habit, you know, they hide... I'm sure it's those craft fairies. I'd love to know what's the strangest place you've found a stamp. One lady found one on a slipper. And yes, they do go. I'm sure animals, cats and dogs, have got a lot to do with where they go. I have to watch my tins. So my colouring pencils, such as my um, pastel pencils, which I'll be using later, I always check the bottom because if I put it on top, which I'm trying not to do, off stamps they can stick to the bottom so I'm trying to be good and not do that but trying is one thing isn't it so <clears throat> we want to just add, add some nice dimension on here and, and build up a bit of a scene so we'll go back to these mini hill masks we'll come in with the pine and that number three brush and I'm just going to add our lovely hair is almost grounded anyway so let's just add a bit of colour under the tree And then we'll just take that across. And I'm not going to overdo it. So if I pop that there while well, I just give this a wipe. And then I just want a lovely hill. So it's which one? I think I'm going to go for this one. And I'm just going to turn mine this way. And I think... I don't want to sort of decapitate my hair look. So I'm thinking I'll just go above... And just look for what I think could be a nice shape. I think that's a nice shape. So I'm just gently, gently, just going to take some of the white off there. I'm going to put my lid on my ink because I don't think I'm going to need to ink up again. And that's a lovely tip, you know, don't over ink if you don't need to. Try your brush first. Might be you've got enough ink on there. And look, what it means is your ink pad will last longer. You'd be amazed on your brushes how you can really use them up. So let's add some sky now. And I've got my moon mask. And I'm thinking, we'll just have the moon popping in this corner. Which again will be good if this is where my darker edge is going to be. So for this one, I'm thinking Della Blue. And we'll go again, our number seven brush. Now, again, I use my Della Blue a lot, so I'm actually coming straight from my ink pad. If it's a new one, obviously dab it in the lid, but mine, I know it's, I'm starting, I've used it quite a lot. And I'm just going to stick in the, the whiter areas, you know, in that middle of the bottle. I don't want to overcook it with the blue. I just want that lovely hint of it. So we'll pop the lid on that and we'll give that a wipe and put that away. So we keep it nice and clean and tidy as we go. 
and I'm happy with that. I just want a little bit more extra something down here. I think it looks a little bit, each time you get to a part, it's quite good when you, you photograph on your, on your phone and go back and have a look. I just think it looks like there's something missing here. So on the foliage set, we've got this lovely stamp here. And that's the one I'm going to go for. But I'm going to use a piece of copy paper. And I'm still using black. And I just want the florals around the base of the tree. So if I mask that bit off, look. So look, it just looks... I didn't want to do a stamp at each side. I think that would have been too much, too fussy. So I've just using the one stamp over the top. I've just got two lovely, looks like they're growing at each side of that tree. And then we're going to have a couple in this corner. I don't want to go right across the front. I don't want to sort of over fussy it. So I'll have some first and second generation there. And remember... When you're pressing at the edge, and obviously you're going over that lip, just give it a bit of an extra oomph. Just so you're stamping, you don't miss any. If you do miss any, just pop it in with your fine liner. Now, I'm just going to, with my Inky Binky, very carefully remove some of that, because the VersaFine Claire just dry slowly on the, the sticker stencil and I don't want to put my arm in it. I'm being mindful not to push it onto my design, but just that'll be fine. So I think I'll just give that a blot. Just in case. I am mindful to, I almost blot it more than I need, you know me, but you know just in case any has come off look. So I want to make it a bit more autumn autumnal. No, I don't. Spring-like. So you can tell I'm an autumn person, can't you? Mind you, at the minute, my poor little head. I don't know, do you ever do that, where you mean one word and another word comes out? Or is that just me? I can be thinking one thing and say something else, and I think, wow, that's random. So I'm going to add that lovely yellow blossom. So I'm going to use Sundance. Now we've got lots of things. You could paint it on, you could use your paints, you could use your pens. We've got our clean colour pens. But I thought today I'd go for a small brush and the yellow ink. And I'm just going to dab it on, look. And I'm following where Tracy has drawn. That lovely look at that. And again, for me, it's quite speedy to do and very forgiving. And don't overthink it. Tracy's drawn the blossom look where it is. And I just think that looks lovely. So we'll add a little bit to our ones down here. And again, the yellow dabs beautifully. But that's why it's good to um, have blotted so we don't get black ink on our stencil brush. Now I want a little bit on here and I could mask off and stamp again, but it's almost too far away. I only want a tiny bit. So what I'm going to do is just come in with my fine liner and just draw a couple of little... I'm gonna stop there. Just add a couple under my tree, look, there we go, stop there, and you'll see why in a moment. Right, so I'm really happy with that. Little bit of shade, I think, don't you? So we'll get these lovely pastel pencils. And that's coming with the brown. And just under the tree, look. And just under the hair, there's a tiny little lip just under the sticker stencil. Now, I can always add a bit more when I take the sticker stencil off if I want. And I just want... Right, I was going to go for that orange, but I think it's too... Let me get my yellow. 
And I'm just going to add a bit of yellow under there. I'm actually going to dab some Posca on there in a minute. But I just think I just want a little bit of yeah. And it's little things like, I don't know, can you see the difference? Just by adding that, it tones in. And, and I just think it really helps. And as I say, when I put the Posca at the end, you'll see the difference. So let's just add some little with that. So this is just the, the white. And I'm just adding a little bit of shape and a little bit of highlight. And again, that's enough. All right, put that back in my tin. So I could put my Posca on now, but for me, I'm going to wait and take the mask off just in case I smudge it. The other thing is, if you want to draw with your fine liner, a black line round, now's the time to do it. I wouldn't do it at the beginning. I have done it at the beginning once. And when I added the ink here, it smudged. So this is the point. If I was going to put a black line, I would do it now. So I'm just going to look. You've got this lovely corner. Lift this. And all I would do here, pop that on there. Damp cloth all the way around. Inky binky. But this is when it's best not to have glitter on your mat. Remember where you put the carrier sheet. And often for me, you know, that's the worst bit. And then pop that straight back on. And then you've got less chance of the back getting too dirty, she says. I say less chance because we all know what being realistic, what it's like. Lovely. So, Tosca time now. Just gonna put just a little because my butterfly is flying. And I'm just going to dot in. Now this is the yellow, but this is the sparkle. You could just use the normal yellow, but I just wanted a little bit of sparkle. And again, I'm almost just dotting over the flowers. I don't want to overdo it, but I love it on top of the ink. I think the two work so well together. And down here, here, even just at the side there, look. And then what we're going to do is just pretend here, as I say, that this is just some flowers in the distance. And as I say, it doesn't need more than just that black little bit of... And if I bring that close, can you see? For me, that just makes such a difference. Last little with my lovely wink of Stella. Just going to add a little bit of almost sparkle to the moon and then on the tree. A little bit on the butterfly. And again, when you actually see these things, it is quite difficult to show you sort of photograph them. Sorry, I've just... Not very good at photographing, am I? But in real life, the sparkle on this is just enough. And these, again, for me, that's just enough to look like there's something in the distance. What I do want to do is just come in with the brown and just give that a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I think that looks better. And speaking of the brown, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow. And as I say, I'm using this side. So I'm very carefully going to come in and just go round. Now it might be you want to leave this off and that's fine. I just love to add that 3D dimension. So I'm just going all the way round and then across the base, but I'm just gonna add more at the base. And I'm also just going to add a little bit under that lip there. So if I bring in cotton bud, <laughs> the worst bit is remembering which one's got brown on. I might treat myself to a new one, you know. And these are biodegradable cotton buds. And I'm just going to blend in the direction. And what happens is this, look, the blending does two things. For me, it looks better. It's more forgiving. It's not a harsh line. But also, 
it will just seal that pastel pencil so that you don't have to use a spray sealant. If we'd done the whole piece of work, you know, we, there are fabulous artists that use pastel pencils and do whole pieces of work and obviously they have to seal them. The same with your pan pastels, if you do a, a whole design, it's best to seal it with a, a spray sealant. But here, we're just using it for a little bit of shading and as I say, we're giving it a good... And I go around a few times just so it fixes it. Just want to get rid of that harsh edge there. There we go, that's better. And can you see, for me, that just gives the lovely shadow at this side and again, just accentuates there, just in that corner. And I keep my little things all in the same box. There we go. So if we move this out of the way, now I'm sure you've got lots of stamps that will look lovely inside a bottle like this. And if I bring in the original, I've purposely left mine without a sentiment. We've got the gorgeous sentiment stickers, or we've got our heartfelt verses. But I'm going to leave this and when I'm at, I'm, then I'm going to decide on my sentiment. Often I do that, but I really hope you can see that sparkle on there. So I hope that's given you some ideas. And as I say, for the ladies who were after spring designs, I mean, I think pink, I'd love to see the pink blossom on the tree. So maybe have a go at that. Honestly, so many ideas. Thank you for popping in and thank you for all your feedback. It's lovely to know that you come in and join me and we just sit here and chat. And I love the way you've been telling me that you actually talk to me. Just sorry I can't answer, but I really can hear you know, because that's the magic of living here. You take care, everybody. I'll see you again tomorrow. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.